Hello and welcome to another video where in this session I'll be taking you through my five top tips to pass the level four drafting and interpreting financial statements exam. Let's get straight into it with tip number one. Know your exam. For the drafting and interpreting financial statements exam, you have a time limit of up to two and a half hours. During that time, you'll be required to complete seven tasks. The total amount of marks available in this exam is 120, meaning you'll need 84 out of 120 in order to pass. On screen now, I've shown the task numbers alongside the marks that each task is worth and the number of minutes that you should roughly be taking on each task. By spending this long on each task, it will take you up to 140 minutes, allowing you 10 minutes at the end to check through your answers. I would strongly recommend allowing yourself this time to make sure you've answered every question and to make sure that you haven't made any silly mistakes. If you need to pause to have a little longer to look over these, then please do that now. Tip number two then, knowing the topics for each task. For this exam, it is thankfully a rather predictable layout, which is great to see and really does help with preparation. Let's have a look at each task and see what we can expect to see. Task one and two, well, these tasks are linked together and will cover drafting statutory financial statements for limited companies. Here we can expect to see questions where you need to complete a statement of profit or loss, statement of changes in equity, a statement of cash flows and statement of financial position. Although unlikely to get asked to produce all four, please be aware that you can be asked to produce any of them. Practice will be key on these questions. You should be able to get yourself into a really strong position, both competency and timing wise, through repeating practice questions. Task three. This is a written task on the reporting frameworks. Now, in terms of questions, this does cover quite a wide range because the reporting framework covers quite a wide range. It's often split into two or three questions, so the amount of detail you'll need to go into on these questions isn't too daunting. Later in this video, I'll be covering the written questions in more detail, so I'll be talking more about what I'd expect to see here in that section. Just bear in mind it's an eight mark question, so do your best, but don't spend too long deliberating on what to put. Get a couple of sentences in and move on and come back to it if you have time. Task four, this will be a partially written task on the international accounting standards. This task will bring together your knowledge on study of IASs and IFRSs. It will be a combination of written elements and multiple choice questions. Again, I'll cover this task in more detail under the written section within this video. Task five, this is a task about drafting consolidated financial statements. Within this task, you'll have to complete a set of consolidated group accounts. I'd expect to see a parent and subsidiary set of accounts with the task being to prepare a consolidated statement of financial position and consolidated statement of profit or loss. In a similar situation to task one, practice questions are key. I wouldn't expect any major curveballs, so as long as you feel confident in answering the practice questions, I'd expect you to be absolutely fine on this question. This is one of the more complex tasks to get your head around, so I fully appreciate it will take time for you to be confident, but once you get through that barrier, this question shouldn't cause too many problems. Task six. Now this task is about interpreting financial statements using ratio analysis. Here we can expect to be given financial information on a business, usually in the form of financial statements, but not always. From the data provided, you'll be required to calculate various ratios. There is absolutely no reason not to do well on this task as long as you've learned your ratios. Do whatever you need to do to help here. Flashcards, poster on your bedroom ceiling, record yourself reading them out and playing them back in the car. Whatever it takes, just learn the ratios. Task seven is the last task, and this is a written task on interpreting financial statements using ratio analysis. 
So similar to what you've done in task six, but this time you'll have to write about them. One of the key parts to doing well on this question is to follow a well-rehearsed format to make sure you've hit the key points. It is worth 22 marks and getting at least 50% on this task should be very easily achieved. You need to be able to understand what goes into each ratio and therefore what can affect it and what it means to the business. Tip three is understanding how to approach the written tasks. We've already spoken about the fact that there'll be three written tasks through this exam. Let's break down each one and look at the common topics along with how they should be approached. So task three, as we've said, we'll cover the reporting framework, but what are the sort of questions that could appear here? Some of the common topics I'd expect to see are differences between types of business organizations, sole traders, limited companies, etc. The difference between a private limited company and public limited company. The definitions of elements of the financial statements, so assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenditure. The underlying principles of accounting, accruals and going concern concepts. Supporting qualitative characteristics such as faithful representation and relevance. As these are knowledge-based written elements, learning the definitions will be key to achieving full marks on this task. Then for task four, we now know that this task tests your knowledge on the international accounting standards. Although the following will more than likely be the only IAS or IFRS that you have learned because they're the only ones which will have been covered within your study material, let's just make sure you're 100% aware of which ones can be tested. I've included on screen now the possible options and therefore the ones you must be familiar with. Any of these may be tested within the exam, so you must understand for all of them what they are and how they should be treated in the accounts. The last task of your exam, task seven, will also be the final written task. And although this is the written task with the highest number of marks available, I would personally say that it's also the easiest to prepare for. Within this task, you'll be required to analyze the ratios of a business. This could either be between two businesses, which you then need to compare performance, or it could be the same business, but you're having to compare between a past year and current year's performance. When answering these questions, I would follow a process. That process being the following. Is the ratio better or worse? Explain what the ratio actually means, what it's made up of, and what is the impact of it being better or worse? Explain what could have caused the ratio to be better or worse. How does the ratio link to other ratios? Are there any consistencies between them? For example, if operating profit margin is worse, does that mean that capital employed is worse or the interest cover is worse? If you follow this format, you should be getting as a minimum 75% of the marks on offer. Tip number four then, using all resources that are available to you. At the time of making this video, within the lifelong learning portal on the AAT website, you currently have available to you the following learning tools. Four e-learning modules, six key calculations, which include the more challenging calculations on the consolidated statements. So well worth a look at. Two videos, one green light test and two mock exams. Now the mock exams are an absolute must before sitting any AAT exam. But for this unit, I would definitely have a look at the key calculations, which you don't get for all exams, but they have been provided in the lifelong learning portal for this one. Tip number five, use the examiner's report to your advantage. This has now been released for drafting and interpreting financial statements and can be found on the lifelong learning portal. I would strongly encourage that you take a look at the full document, but the key points for areas to improve that I would take away from the report are as follows. Task one was preparing statement of cash flows. Now I've been teaching this unit for a number of years now and can say with confidence that on task one, the majority of students hope for the statement of profit or loss over the statement of cash flows. So this is no surprise that they've found an overall weaker performance on the statement of cash flows. Just keep in mind that the format doesn't really change, 
The only thing to watch out for that differs is whether you're reconciling from the operating profit figure or the profit after tax figure, because that will determine whether you need to take out the interest and tax when completing the reconciliation. You also know whether you've done it correctly or not, because when you add up your cash generated from operating activities, investing activities and financing activities, it should equal the difference between the cash at the start of the year and the cash at the end of the year. The other point that I thought was interesting was taking note of the number of marks available to ensure students are making enough valid points to achieve full marks. This is particularly relevant in the ratio analysis task and students should think about the components of the ratio when answering this task to ensure all their points are valid. Now this links to what I said in tip number three on ratio analysis. You need to work through the format that I've provided for each ratio given. Think about the figures that make up each ratio and how these going up or down would affect the result of the ratio. And that wraps up my five top tips for passing the drafting and interpreting financial statements exam. Best of luck with your upcoming exams and I hope you found this video useful and remember if you have hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.